Welcome to the Yoyogi National Stadium on day 12 and the final day of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. This is an historic occasion for para badminton as the sport has made its debut in the Paralympics. Para badminton has been contested internationally since the 1990s with the first World Championships taking place in Amersfoort, Netherlands in 1998. Our lineup for the session, as you can see on the screen here, starting with the men's WH2 gold medal match, followed by the w women's WH gold medal match, and then we're on to a bronze, and finally with another gold medal match. So plenty of really exciting badminton to look forward to. Men's singles, WH2. Back the match between Korea and Japan. Kim Jong-un, the number one seed. And he is up against Kajiwara Daiki. Time to welcome the athletes onto court. First out from Korea, Kim Jung Hyun. He is a 43 year old player and he is up against Kajiwara Daiki, the 19 year old from Fukuyuko in Japan. The umpire for the game is Lao Chen Li of Malaysia. The service judge for the game, Latif Jauhari of Indonesia. So we get an exciting gold medal match to start off the session and Kajiwara Daiki has been playing amazing badminton. So we have Kim Jung Yun, 43 year old. And badminton is one of these games that can be played at all sorts of levels. So the route through then for Liani Ratri Oktila. She beat her teammate Sadia in the uh, opening match in Group A. Faustine Noel dispatched in the, that second matchup. And then Ma Huihui beaten two to nothing in the semi final. So uh, plain sailing thus far for uh, Oktila. 
Yeah, and the, the same as well, of course, of her uh, rival over the last few years, uh, Chung, you mentioned equally uh, good progress as well. I mean, these are the two best players uh, in this in this classification, the top two seeds. Something's got to give, though, here in terms of those records uh, they both take into this gold medal match. Uh, there was that extra variable in the women's doubles. The Indonesians found the solution in that encounter. Tila, partnered by Kalamata Sadia in the, uh, the women's doubles competition. You're watching the badminton gold medal match between the top two seeds here at the Paralympic Games in the standing lower SL4 category, uh, second standing class where the player has a lesser impairment compared to SL3. We're underway, Indonesia against China in the women's singles final. Yeah, of course, uh, across the, uh, the para badminton, what a week it's been uh, of competition. Waited so long for the, uh, this sport to be added to the Paralympic program. It's finally confirmed in uh, 2015. And it's actually served as a, a great deal, not so much these two, of course, they're in the primes of their careers, but it's, um, it's served as a big motivation. We've had a number of stories of uh, players who'd basically retired, done everything they wanted to in the sport, and they came back for these Paralympic Games. And you can understand why. And we've had here six different uh, class classes, sport classes. This is one of them, as you say, the, uh, the SL4 standing lower, the uh, three standing classes, and then the short stature class on top of that, and the two wheelchair classes as well this week. It's going to be interesting to see whether that that doubles has any sort of impact. I tend to say no uh, overall because they have such a big singles history together over the last few years and have both delivered on the biggest stages that I don't think Chung, for example, is going to be too downhearted coming into this. Of course, would have liked to have won the gold uh, in, in, in that doubles. But uh, yeah, the good start here she's making, she knows that she can beat Octila. 4-1. Dropped out. Uh, in a, a tram line that uh, is the limit in singles here. Back baseline is, is good in singles badminton. A big final morning inside the arena here with the last medals to be decided in uh, badminton. Oh. Yeah. And that was a lovely little short angle. That's where the Indonesian is um, so good with their touch in a short game. Good comeback here from a few points uh, adrift. You talk about the lines, actually, there is a good example of it there in that in that exchange between the two, where you're trying to basically get your opponent, trying to go close to the line, but you're trying to, in that, in that sense, sow some uncertainty. Should I play, shouldn't I? Because as soon, see there, they're going so close to the corners, to the lines. The reason is, is that if that shuttle is dropping in and you hesitate ever so slightly, then obviously the quality of your shot isn't going to be as good. The clear isn't going to be as good, and then you can attack that. It's a great dig from Chung. It's not actually, it's not so much about trying to hit outright winners a lot of the time. It's about breeding that uncertainty. Great touch play here from the Chinese. It's, it's building a point, if you like, more than uh, maybe in other sports, other racket sports. 7-4 China. Uh, response in kind there. A couple of great athletes we've got here. Mentioned the uh, the rivalry as well between them. The runs they've had through, but this is where it really gets serious for both of them. Six, seven. 
That's why she's chosen that end as well. You can just see it's holding up a little bit with the drift there, bringing it into play. Chung wasn't sure whether that would drift long or not. Decent. Yeah, confidently put away here. That one, just not enough clearance, not enough height on it from Octila. Chung, up by two, eight six here. Lead is out to three. Get round the backhand there. 9 7. You're watching game one in the women's singles SL4 gold medal match here at the Tokyo Paralympic Games. Well, goes to that short angle drop shot there, but I think she would have seen it out of the corner of her eye. Chung had seen it early, the intention from the Indonesian, and that's why she felt it had to be maybe even better than it, it needed to be there. Ah, that's one Chung would like again. Just gestures there, didn't... Just collapsed a little bit, coming across the shuttle there, trying to get the fade. Oh. Yeah, the mid-game interval here. And again, you can see that they know each other's games very well. Chung here just able to apply her patterns a little bit better in the, uh, the first half of that opening game. So it's the second seed who has the edge just here over the top seeds, the Aniratri Oktila. 11-8 here in the first game. That's the three. Yeah, I think what we've seen is suggested the doubles wouldn't have a huge bearing on it. I didn't think Octila was going to come in here and run away with lifts like she's done, like they've both done to their opponents on the way through to this, because they know each other's games so well. They've played so much together in the biggest matches in the sport over the last few years, and it's just a case that she's executing her game plans a bit better at the moment, Cheng. 11-8 then, Cheng on serve, that's come down the corridor. 11-9, deficit yeah. back to two. Very good return of the service there from the Indonesian, very accurate. Hey! Oh. Taylor just giving it a little too much that time. To trying to force Cheng out wide, out into those tram lines. 12-9. Just got lucky there. Now, it's such a good story, I mean, in terms of uh, these two. Mm. Misjudgment there, just letting that. I mean, she could have played that, Chung. Again, it's the issue just with the drift in this arena, that it moves around, it's very difficult for the players to uh, adjust to all that at times. Oh, lovely. Just taking all the pace off it there, fading it away. Beautiful contact to the shuttle there from Octila. It's becoming a go-to shot there, Octila. 12-12. No. Yeah, I was saying about the uh, the stories. Of course, in Indonesia, I mean, the, uh, both these countries, the uh, sport is so uh, popular. 13, 12. It's another misjudgment. Really using uh, the drift here to throw some uncertainty into Chung's mind. You know, the Chinese, of course, uh, very good at recruiting uh, overall in terms of her story. It's in... Uh, in uh, Guiyang, 
and uh, learn the sport they're now playing with a provincial club in uh, Guizhou. It's amazing how they uh, have got such good systems where talents just don't slip through the net. They're picked up on. It's self-perpetuating success as well, isn't it? A sport that the, the Chinese have dominated since the year dot. There's all that internal competition to be part of the squad, to be part of that, uh, that success. Not having much success here since the uh, the mid game here. Chung, good turn around for Octila. Oh, what an angle that's flatter that time. Deeper in the court, very early. Look how early she took this. Bunting it back. 16, really good adjustments made. You've seen there actually haven't been as many points played in the short game since the mid game here. And it's even when she can get into a shorter rally there now, different scoreboard pressure on Chung there. Not leading anymore, of course, trailing, feeling she needed to go for a bit more. And uh, in some trouble now. It's found the solution here, Octila. First yeah. game. Up by four now. And it's another that drops inside that baseline. Third one, isn't it? Yeah. That's 10 of the uh, last 12 points here for Octila. Silver. It's not missed by much. 14, 18. A bit too heavy that time. Just going for that 15, fade to the outside 18. once again. Octila, 18-15, the gap is three now. First game in this gold medal match in the SL4 category in the Paralympic badminton. Yeah, it's that part of history that the uh, players, even though these two have won World Championship gold medals, have won Asian Para Games titles. Yeah, hands are... Hands, palms stay down there from the line judge. That was good, that receive. Being very aggressive on the receive, Chung, through this opening game. Yeah, it's a big moment, though. I mean, these two, of course, having uh, shared out the biggest titles in the sport, trying to win a Paralympic Games gold medal. Something else. Well, she worked so hard to gain control of that rally there, Octila. And then the miscue right at the end here, clips the tape. Mm. The too shuttle drops her sides. Unfortunate, that. Yeah, too keen there. I mean, she actually got one touch of the tape shot prior as well. Got away with it, but not that time. Yeah, that's one really. She was just too keen to pounce and striking too much uh, down on the shuttle there. And it went into the net. Nicely done. Working the angles really well there, Junk. 19-18. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating matchup, this. Yeah, giving Octila there a little bit of her own medicine as well, because of course uh, she's gone with that play faded to the the Chung forehand side, but that time the Chinese getting it just right. that time she got the judgment absolutely correct and has pulled herself up by the bootstraps here to get to 19 all here in this opening game in the women's singles SL4 gold matchup 19 all now between Indonesia and China Octila and Chung <laughs> superb hit yeah lack of clearance uh, from Octila giving her that opportunity just not enough on the clear The second seed, then Chung. 
has a game point over the top seed, Ogtila, to draw first blood in this gold medal matchup. Got and dusted. Well played. Uh, a game that could have gone either way and indeed did swing both ways. Looked like Octila had recovered from that, uh, that slow start, the top seed, to gain control at the midway point. But Chung got back into this game, found the answers, and uh, Octila ultimately making one too many mistakes at the shake-up. Just out. Well, for once, she got the leave correct there and uh, has been rewarded with the opening game. So, Chung Hei Fang. One game up then on Octila in this gold medal contest in the women's SL4 singles. Yeah, that was compelling, really, between the top two seeds. Expected a tight one here. Of course, uh, Chung leading at the mid-game by three. And then Otilla, it looked like she turned it round, really got herself together. She took 10 of 12 points, uh, led 18-13. But then Chung managed to... There was another twist, wasn't there, where she managed to just edge her way back into it, level up the scores. And then, as you say, was just a little bit more clinical from that 19-all uh, situation. That was the difference. I don't think Otilla is going to be... Completely despondent about this. Played some very good stuff herself in that first game. But, of course, it's only best of three, this situation. So, a game down. The pressure, of course, of wanting to deliver the gold medal as the top seed here. Deliver it for her country, for Indonesia, where, of course, like with China, the, you know, the passion for badminton. And badminton is huge. But Chung, having come through that in a quarter of an hour, well, it's a great position for her to work with, no doubt. Game two then in the women's singles SL4 gold medal match here at the Tokyo Paralympic Games. Chung took the opener 21-19. Just come in good, I think. A miscue from Chung at the start of this second game. Well, again, it's just making and changed ends and everything. It's just making the adjustments to the come back to it again because this is something that television pictures don't really get across is the drift in the arena. And Chung just make, needing to make those adjustments, both of them, in fact, because there, there is some definite difference playing one end of the arena to the other. And I think just the first couple of points, Chung there needing to make the adjustments. There again, just overdone that, you see. What we saw Atila do from that end was just come across the shuttle on a couple of occasions as well, just to control against the drift. trying to flatten it out. You can see Chung there play a bit flatter. It's difficult. You've got to make those adjustments, of course, just in a few points, really, because at this level, you don't want to be giving such a big rival a huge lead, taking time to adjust to the changing conditions. And she's slipped there. Chung, you could see, just tried to uh, make the split step out of there and uh, in no position to recover, yeah need that surface to be absolutely bone dry. You can see here, she makes the receive, so it looks to split and go across and can't recover because she slipped. Change the if they can make the case here, they're allowed to change shuttles as often as they like. I don't think it's really a huge part of this matchup, actually, about the, the state of the shuttle. I think similar levels of power 
of weaponry in their games. I mean, you can have some really, really power smashes in the sport who are wanting to change the shuttle every couple of rallies because they want the fresh shuttle. And then you've got a player trying to play on with that shuttle, trying to get it into an older condition so that it doesn't go through the errors quickly. I don't think it's in this matchup as, as big a deal because there's, I say, similar styles of game. Both obviously operating at a very high level. John taking all the power out of that serve. Taylor leads 6 4 here in game two. Oh, working the angles perfectly there, Octilla. She's really found her groove now. Yeah, well anticipated here, of course. In her, in her backhand corner, Chung, she really had to make that because if you don't, you can punch into the space. Too much ground to make up for the Chinese. 7 4. Again, that's measured to perfection. Just about clears the tape, drops like a stone. And Chun can't get that back over. 8 4. And late on that one, Chung. What Octilla is doing is she's varying the length of the shuttle very nicely here. So deep clears and then drawing Chung forward on a drop shot as well. Good changes of, uh, of pace, of flight. Just a very smart match here. Similar actually to how she played from behind at the mid game, the first game. She actually played like this, took 10 or 12 points and then lost her way uh, from there. That, capable of this, of course, of putting together this passage of play. I mean, again here, look at this, a five-point lead. But in view of what happened in the first game, I don't think she's going to be getting too ahead of herself. Just led 18-13 in the first uh, game and lost it. 9-4 becomes 9-5. Chung is very resilient. You're getting a two down beat, even in a gap here that developed between the two. Sitting there, it's just easy, too easy to pick off. I think what well, something the top players, these two, of course, the top two in the classification do so well. And the change of shuttle here for Tilla just wants some assistance from a new shuttle to take her through. She hopes to the mid game. I think what the uh, the top players do so well, we've seen it from both of them, is when they're down, when they're adrift by a few points, they don't get down on themselves. They're just the old cliche, they focus point by point. Right into that apex, that drop good. Seven. So we're Nine. back to 10 7 now. 7 10. Chung on serve here. Game two. And the Chinese number two seed took the open up. Oh. Super pickup there from Octila. Just. Oh. She's hustled that. Chung can't believe it there. How has she missed that? Get it again here. Just a complete miscue. <laughs> and Octilla couldn't believe it. She'd actually ducked just to say, okay, let's go play the next point. We're not at the mid-game. But she is now. I think what you could see there is, what was it 9-4 the lead for, for Octilla there? I know she leads at the mid-game, but now the lead has come down and in the end it's four there now it's five before she won't be getting too ahead of herself i think with what happened in the first game too much respect for the opponent long way to go to turn this round even at this stage leading by four and for chung she'll know that she's come back from these positions before many times very good mentality We've both got mentioned that just previously it's very important when you're in those positions you four or five points adrift not to see so many players they they get they just the heads drop it doesn't happen with these two just focus on the job in hands trying to pull those deficits back 
Oktila and Sadia are responsible for Indonesia's one and only gold medal of these Paralympic Games thus far in that SL3 to SU5 a women's doubles category. China with three gold medals in the badminton here at Tokyo 2020. Oh, super rally. And uh, she took all the power out of the shuttle there in uh, winning that point, Chung. Yeah, that was delightful. Little stop volley. Stop, if you like, a stab to the, uh, the racket face from Chung. Really good shot. It's not a bad receive, though, is it, either? <laughs> Uh, reading uh, again here the, uh, the service just a step back from Octila. Not enough height on it from Chun. That's awkward as well because quality, the clear, the, the clearance from Octila was so good. Trying there to come across the shuttle, effectively go with a counter drop shot, which is what Chung was trying to do, but she's at the back line there. Very difficult to judge it, as opposed to being at the service line and further up the court. Service over. Yeah, that's nicely played there. Playing that kind of from behind her, going cross court. Deficit is five here in game two. Very tight in on the net there. Otila just getting the measure. Fifteen nine. That was easy. Pan, yeah, Octila's uh, turn there, not to get enough height on the uh, the long serve. Get that long serve, you've got to be going to get considerable height, get it going towards the back line, which she didn't manage there. Hey! Oh. Well, you could see the idea. I mean, she picked the service, picked the shorter service that time, uh, but overdid the, uh, the receive there, Octila. Too much on it. That's good. Very athletic. Great technique on that. The overhead and sending that winner just back in the direction from whence it came. 15 12. This is just eroding this deficit. Service over. 16. Well. That's a, a reversal of that drift advantage we saw in the first game here. But Chung. Trying to find the angles again. Service over. 13, 16. It's got to be in Octila's mind here what happened in the first. Led 18 13, lost the game. Because it's been leading throughout this uh, second game so far, has had leads of five points, six points at one stage. Oh. That was the tighter one there. Closer to that back line from Chung. Yeah, he's had a lead of six at one stage uh, in this second game. Now again, a lead of three, four now. It's not decisive though, you feel. As I say, she led 18-13 in the first game, the Indonesian, and lost it. Oh, how good was that? So good at uh, just feathering the uh, the shuttle. Taking All the out to five it. again. That's the power that play from Chung. Down that line. Unexpected explosion here from Chung. Oh, bullseye. Yeah, and as you say, it's the same position. Well, now, of course, with a point back for Chung. She came from 18-13 down. Check that the uh, 14, 18. Uh, knees are okay. 
surface quite badminton court the surface is quite abrasive and of course they do um, spend a lot of the time diving around trying to get to uh, lower plays well, you can't legislate for that a mistake from Octila just that uh, a split second delay in uh, well deciding whether or not to to take the shot on just wanted a little bit more quality on his service there, having got the gap again down to three. Looking good now, Octila, to take us into a decider. I mean, that is so difficult to do from that far back in the court. You just made that look easy, Chung. 16, 19. Playing that from slightly behind her and getting, taking all of it, just brushing up the back of the shuttle. Let's get it to drop down quickly with no pace. Oh, and she made that. It was a, an absolute killer of a shot. She's got it. Yeah, took it on. Really went for it, Octilla, and it paid off. So, four game points here to level up this gold medal match for Aliani Oktila of Indonesia. We're in play. Well, no, that's one game point saved. And drawing down the power into the net that time from Octila. Yeah, seems to be feeling a little bit physically. Of course, she took that tumble a few points ago, Octila. And they're keen to just try and extend the time between points there, I think, to get a, a, a breather and a bit of recovery. Well, that's that. We're uh, going into a decider here. Serve was long. And Liani Ratri Octila, the uh, top seeds. Yeah, she looks in a little bit of discomfort here. She managed to just get over the line and uh, now has a breather before we go into the deciding game in this women's singles SL4 gold medal matchup. Yeah, just keep tabs. I mean, she managed to see it out. Of course, that time, well, it was a different story from the uh, the opening game. Of course, opened up five, six-point leads, but clearly not feeling 100% here at the moment, the uh, the top seed. Managed to, as you say, grind out in the end, just get over with the lead, get the second game done. But um, it's going to be interesting to see physically what sort of condition she's at heading into the deciding third game here with Chung, who physically looks great. Uh, overall, just paid for a few misjudgments with the drift that we mentioned. Uh, not least, of course, on that on that second game point where she put the service straight out uh, with the drift. But uh, Octila here, it's going to be a real... It's been a big test for her to come back and level it up. And you sense even more, an even bigger effort mentally and physically required here if she's going to win this gold medal and uh, take the decider to do that. You know, it's not the kind of the body language of someone who's just levelled up a gold medal match at one each, to be fair. She is needing to dig deep here, the Indonesian. And it's going to need more of that because Chung will not go away here. It's not like she played badly in that second game. Just couldn't retrieve the deficit. So it's just got to make a few adjustments, a couple of adjustments tactically in terms of uh, dealing with the drift in the arena. But... Uh, yeah, another big effort. Well, we require from both of them at this stage with the gold medal on the line. Yeah, first things first, you know, that she does have another gold medal contest to come later on inside the arena here. Remember, too, in the mixed doubles. Already with that heavy strapping on the upper part of her left leg. A grueling schedule across the five days of competition in the badminton at these Paralympic Games. Certainly when you're gunning for glory in three categories. So, the decider then in the, the gold medal match in women's singles SL4 here. Sorry, 
Silva. 1-1. One, one. One, oh. Yeah, of course, Chung would have seen all of that with Octilla down, sitting down, even having won the uh, second game to force it. Yeah. Seen all that. And uh, Two, on her part, one. she looks fantastic physically. No problems. <laughs> Would like to make a, a good start here, actually, to a game. I and mean, that's something that Chung hasn't really had. The, the two we've had so far, that service is just not doing enough. It's kind of nowhere, that service. Octila yeah. there's inside the back line, contacting with that. It's not it, not not deep enough to be a long serve. Three, two. This is high level stuff. Seeds one and two in the competition in the, the women's singles here. Oh, great shot selection at the net there. And the intention is to just go for the weaknesses of Octilla, the physical weaknesses of Octilla. And the discomfort she's feeling, the Indonesian Chung will be wanting to work around the court even more than ordinarily so. There's the angle again and forcing the mistake. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great point you make, actually. I think we might even see Chung, having lost the second game, make those adjustments, actually, and just really concentrate on pushing Octila deep, then dropping it in short. Test her physically even more. And that's uh, really well done there from Octila, just finding the short angle herself. Shoveling that up. Really well done with the arm. The danger, though, for Chung is she tries to maybe departs a little bit from the, the game plan that took her the, the first game. She starts to go too often too early for, for shorter angles. I mean, that was tough. Probably should have just been a more regulation clear. Brilliant. Super reflexes from both players. In the end, it's Octila who puts away the point. Yeah, I think there's a danger here for Chung. OK, she's seen Octila winning the second game and finding it tough physically, but it's not like Octila is gone here physically. She's just... She's finding it demanding, this particular match. It's not like she's got nothing left in the tank. 6-4. So Chung's still got to... Yeah, Chung's still got to play it point by point tactically, Five, not six. to change it completely here. Think about the position she's got herself into here in a decider. Just, just marginal adjustments, that's all that's required. Yeah. Fabulous little rally there, and uh, Octila able to steady herself at the net. And uh, draw Chung over to that right-hand side of the court, and she'd committed. She wasn't able to readjust and uh, get the ball back in play there, Chung. So it's 7-5 here, and uh, Octila has the advantage. Deciding game in the women's singles gold medal matchup. Yeah, and, and she's just been warned here actually by uh, our umpire Peter Mejaros. Uh, because, of course, she has the service now. She shouldn't be taking that long because that isn't a permitted break. You have the mid-game interval. Uh, but we know Chung at the same time has gone in, obviously, but it's played at the server's pace, so that's why she was warned to get on with it. Great pickup off the drop shot by Chung to begin with, but from that point on, Octila was in control. Yeah, and this is the interesting thing now is, is that actually Octila is trying to draw her forward, but not try and push her back. It's actually just get her, in for, get her involved in 
Short exchanges around the net. Feels that her touch is better at this stage than the Chinese. Reflected in that point. And of course, she can spend her time, the points up at net. She's not expending as much energy. So it's actually it's not a bad tactical play from uh, Octila here. Oh, that's in. So it's over. This judgment from Octilla just brings the gap down to two. <laughs> Too much to do there at the net Seven, to eight. find that angle, get the ball back up and over from Octilla. So eight, seven. Well, it's the subplot to this. You just feel as it goes on here, this is another gruelling game, and we've only had, we're eight each here, seven, eight minutes into this deciding game already here. And you just wonder whether, over the longer term here, whether that will be the difference, whether Chung would come out on top. Because Octilla's having to work so hard to win these points from her perspective. Just feel at the moment like I'd give Chung the slight edge because she seems physically a bit fresher. And that we're still here, not quite at the mid-game interval. This is not like we're, say, 17 all in the decider where Octila can just double down and say, OK, a few points. I need a few points. Still quite a long way from winning the gold medal here. A couple of mistakes. Well, make that three have enabled Chung to just build up a lead, almost in the blink of an eye here. So three misjudgments of one sort or another from Octila, and all of a sudden she's three adrift here in the deciding game in the gold medal match in women's singles, the SL4 category. And as mentioned earlier, these top two seats know each other so well. There have been high-level meetings over the course of the last three or four years. Looking at Octila there, 19 the medals at uh, major events, the Asian Para Games, the Asian Para Games, the World Champs and the Paralympics. Singles and doubles success for both of these players. Indeed in doubles, Octila has got the better of uh, Chung. And world Championship success in Ulsan and Basel. And I tell you what, Tila has just lost the, the groove at the moment. Yeah, it felt like we've been discussing it for quite a while, the, the physical impact of this matchup. And I think for the first time, that's what we're seeing here. She's putting such an effort to come back from a game down, first of all. And then even in this decider, physically it's been tough on her. And I just think maybe for the first time, she's trying to dig in, dig deep. And she's found a great angle there. But she's got to tell herself again here, I'm four adrift. Again, I've got to fight back. And that's been the story throughout this final. Now, just, just needs to dry the, uh, the palm there. Thank you. Chung, she's OK. And nothing wrong with her physically at all throughout. It still looks great in terms of her energy levels. The focus, as it's been for a while, is on the Indonesian. That's a great point from Chung again, just building on that. Look how she's just moving Octilla this way and that again, side to side, up into the court and back. Very smart play. That's a, that's a cheeky little receive. <laughs> Wasn't it just? <laughs> well, she'd be grateful for the shorter point above all. Octilla doesn't want to be, at all possible, drawn into too many longer exchanges. 10 14. To be a good leave, yeah, it's the Chinese who are cheering. So Chung takes another step forward. And 
down the line again. Momentarily wrong footing, Octila. And uh, she has all the answers at present here. The Chinese player just looks, just looks physically sharper at this stage. And of course, if you're physically sharper, it allows you to do more, do more of what you're uh, capable of. Octila, a fantastic player, but if you're just off even fractionally physically at this level, it makes a huge difference. A little bit late on that that time, Chung. Yeah, gestures to her coach. So I'm quite in position for that, clear. So difficult there. She's played so much of this gold medal match from behind, Octilla. You think about it. Great angle on the shot there from Octilla. What a get that was. What a get this. That is the best bit of defensive work I think we've seen in this final. Chung has really turned the screw in this third game. 17 11. Service over. 12, 17. Yeah, because she's had she had the lead in the first game, but ever since she lost that, she's been behind mentally. That's it's tough the way she lost that first game, Octila. This will be the biggest effort of all, of course, here trailed. Uh, here by six. Note that 17 11. Octila trailed. Uh, there was room to put oh. Octila away there. But uh, the angle was prohibitive. Yeah, I wonder whether uh, in the end game of things here, Chung might look back at that one because really should have made that right on top of the net. Just winning the battle of wits at the net again there, Chung. So she edges on. The lead of four here. She needs just three more points to be crowned Paralympic champion in women's singles in the SL4 class, Chung of China. That might... That might dribble over but uh yeah the physical examination for yeah, Tiller continuing here still trailing by three quick. An interval. Make it quick. Yeah. it's just being warned here by Mejaros the uh, umpire that's not the first time this has happened because such a physical matchup particularly for Tiller that she wants to extract more time but you're not allowed a full break there. The only time you're at a break is a proper mid-game interval. That's 15, where you have the minutes. 18, Otherwise, this is just late. a quick swig and on. Umpire absolutely right to try and enforce that. Tell her serving then at 15-18 here. That's a fantastic lead. Service over, 19-15. She's nearly there. 19-15. Chung, who got the better of Octilla in the 2017 World Champs final, two years prior to the uh, reversal in that final in Basel at the Worlds. Service over, 16, 19. Yeah, back to a gap of three. Yeah, needs a good run with the service, though. She's starting to run out of time here, Octilla. Yeah, gets that short angle right this time. Missed that, of course, didn't she? A couple of points prior, Chung. 20, match point, 60. So, gold medal points, four of them for China's Chung. Oh, wonderful tension in that rally. The miss from Octila. And Chung is able to celebrate. It's a, a fourth gold medal for China in the badminton here at the Tokyo Paralympic Games. It is Chung Hei Fang on this occasion who's got the better of her great rival from Indonesia, Liani Ratri Octila. It is the second seed downing the top seed 
who, let's be honest, is uh, not in top physical shape. She's really struggling at heavy strapping on the, the right thigh and uh, seemed to be uh, in some discomfort the deeper we got into that gold medal contest. Has to go again in the doubles later on, but uh, Chung won't care about that. The gold medal winner in women's SL4 singles at these Tokyo Paralympic Games. Chung, the champion from China. Yeah, fantastic performance. Uh, you got a feel for Octila here, the top seed, who gave it everything, really dug in, tried to dig in, but we just wondered physically, you mentioned that strapping on the leg as well, and I just think through that gold medal match, she wasn't quite in her best physical condition. And of course, against her great rival, that was always going to be difficult for her. Chung just looked up for it physically, mentally, everything. Fantastic performance uh, as well. And seeing off her, uh, her great rival for the gold here. Of course, it's the bit of history again here, isn't it? Para badminton involved in the program in the Paralympic Games for the first time. And in this classification, it's uh, Chung who gets the better of Octilla to win that first ever Paralympic Games women's singles SL4 gold medal here. Confirmation then of the gold medal final. The uh, result going the way of China in the women's singles SL4. She did it, Chung, in three here. 21-16 in the decider after Oktil at the top seed had levelled it up by taking the second game. She was able to see it out here. taking advantage of the uh, physical uh, difficulties being experienced by the Indonesian top seed. But in 50 minutes, Chung has been able to take away the Paralympic gold medal. <laughs> 